Historically, when it comes to noise gates, I've been a big opponent of the idea of using them. My belief has always been that if you're following the basic tenets of what I call the holy trinity of tone, which means that you're using high quality buffers, high quality isolated power supplies, and soldered patch cables, that a lot of the noise issues that many of us experience will be fairly mitigated, if not eliminated, by following those steps. My feeling has always been that the use of noise gates does compromise and jeopardize the tone to some degree, but as you'll find today and through this exploration on noise gates, that I've actually come around to be able to appreciate more the things that they do. But before we go any further, I want to remind people that only about 30% of you are actually subscribed to the channel. If you want to stay up to date with all the new videos that we're coming out with every single week, I highly recommend that you like, you subscribe, so please do that now if you haven't already. So let's talk first about the most common reasons that people might want a noise gate. The way that I see it is, one reason could be that you have an extremely noisy guitar, potentially a vintage guitar with unpotted pickups or just really high gain pickups that produce a relatively high noise floor, and you're trying to get rid of that. Another thing that could produce a lot of noise that would be a reason for a noise gate is you have some pedals that are particularly noisy and really raise the noise floor where it's no longer usable for you and your taste in music. The third reason could be that you have a really noisy amplifier, and this could be because it's really high gain, that it has multiple cascading gate stages, and as a consequence of that, you have a really high and outrageous noise floor, and that may not be practical for you given your gigging situation or your tolerance level for noise, or it could be a combination of all three. Now, I'm happy to report that there are plenty of great options for noise gates, many of which are available at our sponsor today, which is Sweetwater, who provided all of the noise gates that we're gonna use throughout the course of the video. When I think about the first example about a noisy guitar, usually the easiest way to gate that out is to just use the simplest of gates, gates that have a simple input and an output. A good example of one like that might be the MXR Smart Gate, or if you wanted to go with a really budget option, the Pigtronics Mini Gatekeeper could be another easy one that would solve this problem. You would wanna place this gate as close to the guitar as possible. So you would go guitar, then directly into the gate, and then it would go through the rest of your pedal board. Maybe you could put a tuner before the gate because generally those aren't adding any noise floor, but that would gate out everything coming from the source of the guitar, which is the source of the noise, and would gate that out so that everything following it wouldn't be getting that signal going into it as far as the noise is concerned. That would be the best place to put a gate if you were strictly trying to gate out noise from your guitar and your guitar pickups that might be creating noise in your system. The next possible situation that would require a gate is if you have some noisy pedals. In this particular case, you could use something like the MXR Smart Gate or, as I had mentioned before, the Pigtronics Mini Gatekeeper and use it after all of your noisy, let's say, distortion and overdrive pedals. But I think a more effective way is to actually use a four cable method version of a noise gate. This could be something like a G-string decimator. This has an input and an output for the guitar, and then basically has a send and return for the noise gate feature. So this will allow you to wrap the noise gate around the pedals that are noisy, where you use that send and return to create a loop around all your overdrive and distortion pedals or any of the noise making pedals in your rig. And then you go out of it and you follow it with whatever the other pedals are that wouldn't create so much noise. And then things like modulation, delay, reverb, those typically live outside of it because you don't want the gate to prematurely cut off those trails that would be produced by some of those time-based pedals. Now, the third situation is if you have a noisy amplifier, let's say a high gain amplifier that has an effects loop, you can use these same four cable method versions like the G-string decimator to really effectively be able to gate out any noise with an amplifier that has an effects loop and has multiple channels and is very high gain. In order to do that, the guitar is gonna feed all the normal pedals as usual in series, just as you normally would going in front of the amplifier. But the last effect before you go into the front of the amp is going to be the input of your noise gate. Then the send out of your noise gate is going to feed the input of your amplifier. Then on the back of your amplifier or the front of the amplifier, depending on where the effects loop is located on your amp, you're gonna go out of the effects send of the amplifier, which is essentially the preamp out, and go into the return of your noise gate. 
So this way you've created the gate around the actual preamp section of your amplifier using the input of the amplifier and the effect send, which is the preamp out. And then the output of your noise gate is going to feed any of the other effects that you want to put in your effects loop. And then it's going to go back into the return, in essence, creating the noise gate loop around the actual preamp of the amplifier, getting rid of all that unwanted noise. And something like the decimator G-string would be an absolute perfect candidate for this particular type of situation, as would a Boss NS2. Now, if you wanted to add pedals to this situation in front of the amplifier and also include those in the gate, you would just move the input of the gate further up in the signal chain before it hit any of the distortion pedals. And then the send out of the gate would hit all of the distortion pedals and all the other effects that are gonna be going in front of the amplifier. And then you would continue the same signal path where the effect send or the preamp out would go back into the return of the noise gate and then the output would follow it with all the time-based effects to feed into the effects return of your amp effects loop. Now there's one other type of gate that I don't have an example of here today, which is a gate that uses a key input. And one great one that I can think of that's highly popular is the Fortin Zool. And so this has an input and an output in a key. And the key input is just the sensor for the gate. The same way on a four cable method version like this G-string decimator, there's a guitar input that's being used as the sensor. And this is often split off of the guitar on the input of the rig. This can often be done by pedals like a Boss TU3 tuner that has two outputs that are split off of it. And you can feed one of those to feed the gate. And these are generally located in the effects loop after the effects send. So the very first device after the effect send is the noise gate, and then that key input is used to help the gate track better. And you can replicate a Fortin Zool with something like the G-string decimator. The way that you would do that is you would still use the guitar input as the sensor input. This is where the guitar would be split off from and feed that guitar input. Once you've split off and you've hit that guitar input, then you're gonna be able to use the effects loop in the G-string decimator to essentially go from the send of the effects loop into the return of the noise gate and then the output of the noise gate will feed the rest of the effects. You don't need to use the effects send on the noise gate itself because you've already got that sensor on the input and then you have the gate happening on the return and then the output of the actual noise gate pedal, in this case, the decimator G-string. So you can create a Zool-like function out of an NS2 or out of a decimator G-string if you wanna have it in that particular configuration. You can also use a standard noise gate like the MXR smart gate in an effects loop and just again, using it right after the send, you wanna put it as close to the end of the noise source as possible. So putting it right after the send makes it most effective in calming down any of that amp noise. So before we get into the plane, I wanna mention one thing that is often common, especially when you're using four cable method versions of noise gates like the Boss NS2 or the Decimator G-String. In many cases, you'll often run into a ground loop. So I wanna go about explaining to you how you would solve that problem if in fact that happens to you. The easiest way to do that is to disconnect the ground on one side of your cable, either on the gate send or on the gate return. This can sometimes be irregular depending on the type of rig that you have. Some people that are versed in pro audio will have very strong opinions on the way that you would disconnect the ground from one side, either the send or the return. Because we're doing an unbalanced system here with guitar pedals, it doesn't always follow the same rules. So I haven't found it to be exactly consistent from rig to rig. And this just breaks the ground in one of those places so that you don't have that unwanted noise. And another way you could also do it if you didn't want to cut away the shield is you could connect a 0.01 ceramic cap to the shield and then that would allow you to be able to, in essence, achieve the same thing without having to cut away the shield completely. I now wanna get into the idea of how much a gate affects the tone. And for these examples today, I'm gonna to be using the MXR Smart Gate after the effects send on my Soldano SLO. I'm gonna be using a Gibson Les Paul. It has Tom Holmes pickups in several upgrades to the bridge and the ABR1. This is an amazing Les Paul. And in fact, this very Les Paul is for sale on Sweetwater's Gear Exchange. So if you're interested in this particular guitar and you're interested in Sweetwater's Gear Exchange, which is basically 
everything that I love about Reverb without the things that I dislike about Reverb all in one place. You can check out the links in the description if you're interested in this amazing guitar. This guitar belongs to my friend Tim, who we're gonna be bringing on to play some of these examples today in the video. So you're gonna get to hear this thing in action and it absolutely sounds amazing. And in fact, I'm actually considering having him sell it to me. It sounds so absolutely killer in this particular context. We're gonna be using a little bit of delay from the J Rocket Clockwork Delay and a little bit of reverb from the Digitech Polara. You're also gonna hear a hint of chorus coming from a Boss CE2W and it's gonna be set to the Dimension D setting. So the first song I wanna play where we can really test out how much of a consequence the gate has on tone is we're gonna play a little Eyes Without a Face. And this is the classic Billy Idol song and it was played by Steve Stevens on guitar. And what you're gonna hear first is you're gonna get to hear just the straight up guitar dry without the noise gate. Then we're gonna bring in the noise gate. And again, just playing a couple of chords, a couple notes, Tim's gonna play it for us. And then we're gonna go into the actual track. You're gonna get to hear the track not only with the noise gate disengaged, but also that same passage with the noise gate engaged. So you're gonna get to hear in real time how much the gate affects the overall sound and is there a consequential or noticeable difference with the noise gate on or off. This is something that I think is a really great tell as to the impact that the noise gate actually has on the tone and whether it is something that you really need to be concerned about. So let's listen to my friend Tim Marco. He's gonna come in and take my seat. He's gonna be playing this amazing Les Paul through the Soldano SLO. We're gonna have that MXR smart gate in the effects loop right after the effects send. And again, with a little hint of reverb delay and modulation. Let's listen to it. <laughs> So that sounded insanely good. And the one thing that I noticed is that there wasn't a tremendous amount of difference short of any inflections in playing that might just be slightly different from one take to another that makes me say that this gate is so problematic to the overall tone. Certainly we could hear in the opening examples with it on and off, it certainly quieted down the guitar quite a bit and it's certainly a, a pretty high gain amp and we have it on the lead channel. But I still think it really sounded hardly different in in both circumstances which makes me think you know the gates maybe not as problematic as we might think and again this isn't the highest possible gain amp out there and we're not playing it with super super high gain but certainly enough where the gate makes a difference so for this next example we're gonna do some Def leopard love bites again same process and uh, i'll bring tim back in and we're gonna see how this rig sounds again with the gate on the gate off in real time on love bites let's have a listen So I think again, this is, I think, proof that there is very little difference in how it affects the overall sound. I am not hearing that the tone is being starved out. I'm not using super extreme settings on this noise gate, on the smart gate by MXR, but it's enough to drop the noise down to the point where it's not going to be 
hurting anything, but it is certainly getting rid of any unwanted noise. But in the context of the track, it's almost indistinguishable which one is which or which one has the gate and which doesn't. When the band is playing, the whole mix is there. There's really nothing to detect as far as a tone suck that's occurring as a consequence of using the gate. But I wanna see if we can prove this even further. So I'm gonna to go to a third track. And in this one, we're gonna play a little bit from Appetite for Destruction, the song Night Train. We're gonna to get to play some slash licks again with this beautiful gold top. It sounds absolutely insanely good. I'm gonna bring back in Tim. Let's hear how this sounds and see if it changes our mind. So first of all, big shout out to Tim for bringing some hot licks throughout all the examples today. I did not detect any difference here that was meaningful between these two examples. It sounded great with the gate on, it sounded great with the gate off. It's definitely made me rethink all of this, <laughs> the kind of preconceived notions that I've had about gates. And I think I'm just gonna leave the smart gate, in fact, on the effects loop of my SLO and just leave it in that position it sounded really great and I really liked, you know, how much it cleaned up the noise floor and it didn't change the overall tone of what I was going for. Clearly with Tim playing and hearing it both ways, uh, I, I am a believer. I'm a believer now in the noise gates in this particular context. If I'm playing a clean amp or something like that, maybe you don't need it. But in this case, I think it is needed and it certainly gives us an appreciably better noise floor and it doesn't change our overall sound. So thank you so much for watching and thank you so much to Sweetwater for providing these amazing gates, the MXR Smart Gate and also the ISP Decimator G-String, both amazing gates. And if you're interested in getting these or some of the others that I mentioned in this video, the Boss NS2 or the Micro Gatekeeper from Pigtronics, you can definitely get those over at Sweetwater and you can talk to one of their sales engineers to get you set up with the perfect gate for you. If you dug this video, I highly recommend again that you like, you subscribe, you leave us again a comment if you have any questions about how to use a gate or you just wanna celebrate one of the amazing playing examples that Tim did to show off how great gates can be in the context of some of the tracks that we played them over. It was a pleasure doing this. I definitely learned something today and I hope that you did as well. Until next time, I am Mason Marangella from Vertex Effects, and that was our exploration of noise gates. We'll see you next time.